Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is TBR Schmidt, this is my wife Samantha. Hello. And today we are watching Fargo. What do you know about this movie? So this won our drama Patreon poll. So we would like to thank all our patrons for voting for this to win our drama Patreon poll. I think we had some good films on there that the patrons were excited about. Yeah, I mean, pretty much anything on polls will be done at some point. It's more about just kind of the order, but um, today it's Fargo. Yeah, so I know that this is a Coen Brothers film. Yes. We did The Big Lebowski on the channel and we've seen True Grit. Yeah, we saw True Grit in theaters a while ago. Before the chance. So Coen Brothers, super well respected, some of the best movie makers. I don't really know much about it. I think it's a cop in like the middle of nowhere or something. That's what I got from the movie poster. So yeah. it looks like it's like snowy maybe and then it was like a cop. Maybe a lady cop? I'm actually not sure. <laughs> I <don't know. laughs> and I also think there might be a TV show. Yeah, I think there's a Fargo TV series. I think it's each season doesn't matter to the next, I believe. And I think that's also considered one of the top TV shows. So tons of great content coming from the Coen brothers. I don't know how much they had to do with the TV show or not, but I'm really looking forward to experiencing Fargo. Yeah, me too. So if you'd like to see the full length reaction to this, as well as everything else that we've reacted to, the link to our Patreon is in the description. If you'd like to interact with us on our Instagrams, Twitch, or Twitter, all those links are in the description as well. And with that, let's get into the movie. But that's crazy because usually everything is based on a true story. Yeah, this is saying this is true, true. Just the names are different. Oh, Francis McDormand. Oh, wow. William H. Macy also. Nice. This is a stacked cast. So epic for this car coming over the hill. Oh, okay, Fargo, North Dakota. Oh, we were in Minnesota. I think whatever's gonna happen is in Minnesota. <laughs> and I feel like Steve Buscemi just popped out of the screen right there. We've been sitting here an hour. He's peed three times already. <laughs> you got the car? Yeah, you bet. It's out in the lot there. I like his accent. Minnesota. I'm not gonna debate you, Jerry. I will say this, though. What Shep told us didn't make a whole lot of sense. You want your own wife kidnapped. Whoa. I mean, you give us half the ransom, 40,000, you keep half. It's not me paying the ransom. Her dad, he's real well off. Oh, man. See, I just need the money. Oh, why don't you just ask him for the money? Or your fucking wife, you know. Or your fucking wife. <laughs> yeah, Jerry. These are personal matters. Personal matters? Yeah, personal matters. Oh, fuck it, let's take a look at that Sierra. <laughs> $40,000, just do it. Ooh, that could be okay, so, <laughs> kidnap his own wife. Oh, she seems sweet. How you doing, Wade? Yeah, pretty good. Is he staying for supper then? I think so. Are you staying for supper? Yeah. Oh, and they have a kid? Yeah, it's gonna be messy if he's here. Wade, have you had a chance to think about that deal I was talking about? You say we're gonna put there? A lot. It's a, a limited... No, it's a lot. I mean, a parking lot. <laughs> this could work out real good for me and Gene and Scotty. Gene and Scotty never have to worry. Ooh. Not you. Stop outside of Brainerd. I know a place there we can get laid. I'm fucking hungry now, you know. <laughs> Stop, get pancakes, and then we'll get laid, all right? Just want some pancakes. And I'm paying 19 dollars for this vehicle here. I'll talk to my boss. How did he lose 40K? Install that true coat at the factory. There's nothing we can do. But I'll, I'll talk to my boss. Really need that true coat. It's always more. You going to the Gophers on Sunday? Oh, you betcha. <laughs> oh, you betcha. He says I can knock a hundred dollars off that true coat. <laughs> You're a bald faced liar. Fucking liar. Whoa, cursed. Damn checkbook, let's get this over with. Oh, he got him. Brain nerd. Oh, Bunyan. That is huge. <laughs> Couldn't get separate rooms. <laughs> Some lot lizards. I need the cash pretty quick there in order to close the deal. If your numbers are right, Stan says it's pretty sweet. Does that mean he might not need his wife kidnapped? You know those two fellas you put me in touch with up there in Fargo? They vouch for Grimsrud. Who's his buddy? Uh, Carl something. Never heard of him? Don't vouch for him. <laughs> See this deal I needed him for? I may not need it anymore. Oh, wow. An alternate number or what have you. Nope. Okay. <laughs> oh, real good then. Real good then. The plan's still on. Ugh. 
And he didn't vouch for this guy. Can't say one fucking thing just in the way of conversation. Oh, fuck it. I don't have to talk either, man. See how you like it. He will like it. <laughs> Two could play at that game, smart guy. Just see how you like it. I think that's what he wants. 320,000, you got the money last month. Yeah. Can't read the serial numbers on your application. Yeah, but the deal's on? already done. I already got the money. They exist, all right? Sure they do. How many schemes is this guy running? If I can't correlate this note with the specific vehicles, then I gotta call back that money. Uh, yeah, okay, no problem. I'll just fax that right over No, 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 no. <laughs> okay, real good then. Oh my God. He is like drowning. 750 here, 80 here, 320 there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now. Oh man, she's about to be kidnapped. <laughs> ourselves at home now katie i gotta admit oh no it's happening right now well how do you get the egg? there was an egg in here right <laughs> somewhere that lays empty eggs no no <laughs> what, can you not see her <laughs> oh man How high is she? <laughs> He's just worried about his hand. She in the shower? Oh, she not go out the window? <gasps> what are you doing, lady? <laughs> oh God, I thought she was gonna like snap her neck on the stairs or something. Oh no. This went from a staged kidnapping to a murder? These numbers are right. This looks pretty sweet. Oh, those numbers are right, all right. I doubt they are. But we never talked about your fee for bringing it to us. I was bringing you this deal for you to loan me the money to put in. It's my deal here. He just needs the cash. Finder's fees, what, 10%? Heck, that's not gonna do it for me. Jerry, we're not gonna just give you $750,000. I, I... This guy's a wreck. With a dead wife. Jeez, what the heck are you? We're not a bank, Jerry. Yeah, they're smart. <laughs> I assume if you're not interested, you won't mind if we move up <laughs> independently. Take the finder's fee, Jerry. Seriously, take something. Man, his wife was so nice and she just died going down the stairs. So he's getting 10% then? Maybe. That deal even exists, or if it was just a scam for him to get money. He's also out 40000 right? Because those guys came. There's going to be no <laughs> ransom. Are they still going to try to collect their money after killing his wife? Hon? Oh, I thought his, her body was just going to be right there so or something. So did I. She did not go out the window. Wade, it's Jerry. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. It's my wife. Yeah. Right, Wade, see? I, it's Jerry. I, You're right. It's something hard, geez. It's terrible. <laughs> it is terrible. This is getting worse. Uh, uh, yeah, Wade Gustafson, please. <laughs> jeez, Paul Bunyan. <laughs> is she dead, though? I hope she's not. Maybe she just knocked herself out. Oh, thank God. Shut the fuck up, or I'll throw you back into the trunk, you know? What I've heard you say all week. <laughs> oh, no. Ah, shit. Oh, the tags. The tags? I never put my tags on the car. <laughs> what the f- I don't worry, I'll take care of this. She could just scream, right? Right. All right, just, just keep it still back there, lady, or else we're gonna have to, you know, I think this guy is a wild card. Hey, I'll take care of this. I think so too. Serge or whatever his name is didn't vouch for him. Sep or whatever. <laughs> Shep. Shep. Yeah. Yeah, I was uh, gonna tape up this the, the tag. Must have slipped my mind. So maybe the best thing to do would be to take care of that. <laughs> the fifty dollars. Just thinking we could take care of it right here in Brainerd. Uh. Put that back in your pocket, please. Oh no, we just try to bribe him. Oh, and she's making noise. <gasps> oh. Just a fountain of blood. The 
That's not, I think this is true. This is a true story. Just wreck that guy. You'll take care of it. You're smooth, smooth, you know. I feel like he's about to get it. Yeah, right? Just clear him off the road. Should have taken the $50. Oh, oh no. no. What are you doing still holding the cop's body? You idiot. Oh, this dude's just about to go on a killing spree. Yeah. Oh my God. How could that guy be so slow moving a cop's body? He's just gone. Uh oh. Ooh. What the heck? They just crashed? Oh, they really crashed. I didn't realize it was upside down. Yeah. They were probably freaking out. Yeah. All of this just because Jerry had some debts to pay. Wow. That got bloody fast. Just kept escalating. Oh, jeez. Yeah, three people dead. Oh, my, where? Yeah? Oh, jeez. <laughs> oh, jeez. You can sleep. It's early yet. I'll fix you some eggs. It's okay, hon. I gotta run. Gotta eat a breakfast, Marge. <laughs> gotta eat breakfast. Aw. Oh, hon, you can sleep. Gotta eat a breakfast. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> so sweet. She pregnant? Time, time to shove off. I think so. Looks good. I'm hungry. <laughs> we'll have some breakfast <laughs> after this. Yeah. Hi. Yeah. Prowler needs a jump. Oh shoot. <laughs> Woo! What you got there? Thought you might need a little warm up. They're all so nice. Yeah. Where is everybody? It's cold, Margie. Oh, watch out. Oh, jeez. <laughs> the head and the hand there. I guess that's a defensive wound. She's so calm about this. We got a shooting. These folks drive by. There's a high-speed pursuit. And then this execution type deal. Yes, exactly. I'd be very surprised if our suspect was from Brainerd. Yeah. <laughs> from his footprint, he looks like a big fella. Oh, she's great. Let's go take a look at that trooper. There's different footprints here, Lou. This guy's smaller than his buddy. She's so good. Yeah. You don't think he's mixed up in the... Oh, no, no. I just want to get Norm some night crawlers. Yeah, she can't have coffee, right? <laughs> Tag starting DLR. They don't got no match yet. I'm not sure that I agree with you 100% on your police work there, Lou. Yeah, does DLR stand for something? I think that vehicle there probably had dealer plates. Ah. Guy couldn't afford personalized plates, so he went and changed his name to J3L. Yeah, that's a good one. Is that real? <laughs> this is a true story. <laughs> I give these sons of bitches a million dollars. What's my guarantee they're gonna let her go? Million dollars? They are, they got my daughter. Think this thing through here, Wade. Jerry, what the fuck are you doing? No cops. This is my deal here, Wade. Yeah. Jean is my wife here. It's his daughter. And I'm thinking we should offer him a half a million. Now come on here. You gotta just bite the bullet on this thing. Yeah. <laughs> Jerry, just going along with it. Do you want anyone at home with you till they call? Just supposed to be dealing with me. They're real clear. Yeah. Like you said, Stan, they're calling the shots. He's not even sad. Scotty gonna be all right? Yeah, geez, Scotty. Yeah, your son? I'll go talk to him. This guy's real shitty. He did use his wife to gain money. What do you think they're doing with mom? They're not gonna wanna hurt her any. They just want money. What if something goes wrong, Dad? Nothing's going wrong here. We gotta play ball with these guys. Yes, yeah, Stan Grossman. He'll tell you the same thing. Just ask Stan. You just say mom's down in Florida with Pearl and Marty. I don't want this to work out for him, but I want his wife to be okay. I know. She's like the nicest lady. I mean, obviously he's gonna get caught. There wouldn't be a movie about it. <laughs> That's true. But a million dollars. I know, he upped that quick. He got like greedy. Yeah, or he was always planning on taking a million or something and he just told them 80. Maybe. She is a fighter. 
Oops. <laughs> Don't let her hit her head or something. Hiya, hon. I brought you some lunch, Margie. <laughs> Night crawlers? Yeah. Ooh, McDonald's. Oh, yeah, looks pretty good. Arby's? Uh-huh. Oh, Arby's? They're good, Norm, but you're better than them. You think so? Oh. You got Arby's all over me. <laughs> How we doing on that vehicle? Two men checked into the Blue Ox registering a Sierra. Yes, they are on the trail. Yeah, that's where we met. But I dropped out, though. Yeah, she dropped. <laughs> Her face. I want you to tell me what these fellas look like. <laughs> kind of funny looking. In what way? I don't know, just funny looking. Can you be any more specific? He wasn't circumcised. Okay. Anything else you can tell me about him? Like I say, he was funny looking. More than most people, even. <laughs> Said they were going to the Twin Cities. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Oh, you betcha, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> His dialogue. Oh, I love it. It's so cute. Jesus Christ. I mean, they're not wrong. Steve Buscemi's funny looking and he's smoking constantly. They just have the oven on for heat. God damn it. This dude looks like he's going to lose it at yeah. any minute. I'm turning in, Norm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he's already knocked out. This is Mike Yanagita. I hope I didn't wake you. That's okay. I saw you on the news there. Who the hell is this guy? How are you doing? Oh, pretty good. Oh, heck. Okay. It's great to hear from you. An old flame. Let's just finish this deal up here. Blood has been shed, Jerry. Three people in Brainerd. We need more money. What the heck are you talking about? This turning into a real kidnapping? A deal's a deal. Watch those three poor souls up in Brainerd if a deal's a deal. The heck do you mean? The heck do you mean? See you tomorrow. 80,000. If he's still getting a million from his father-in-law i've not received those vehicle ids you promised yeah i those are in the mail my patience is at an end yeah good day sir yeah he is just like digging himself deeper and deeper into this hole i mean he could still get nine hundred twenty thousand dollars, even paying these guys the full 80. yeah quite a spread she got there calls made from the lobby payphone at the blue ox second one's a private residence a shep proudfoot wow a what? Shep Proudfoot. That's a name. Okay. Yeah. That was quick. I'll take a drive down there then. Oh, yeah? She's like the most accurate cop there is. <laughs> is he gonna ask for more? I think so. These guys are dangerous. With all due respect, Jerry, I don't want you mucking this up. He already did. It's all his fault. Jerry, you're not selling me a damn car. It's my show here. That's it. Don't give them the full Wait, million. We prefer to handle it, Jerry. He needs to do this himself or else he can't distribute it. Yep. Would you happen to know a good place for lunch in the downtown area? <laughs> the Radisson. Oh, yeah? Is it reasonable? Oh, I love her so much. Right? She's just so calm and just nailing everything. They're going to go away with a million dollars. And then Jerry's going to be fucked. Also, are they going to be pissed to know that he was getting them a million and only going to give them 40? So did they leave it in a car? No, I think he's just getting plates. Oh. So he doesn't get pulled over again or something. Yeah, I decided not to park here. Well, I'm sorry, sir. We still got to charge you the $4. I just fucking pulled in here. See, there's there's a minimum charge of $4. <laughs> oh, God. Just pay the $4. Rule of your little fucking gate here. Here. There's your $4, you pathetic piece of shit. <laughs> oh, damn. Where's Chef? Talking to a cop. Cop. Oh, man, she's already here? It's just hard for me to believe you don't remember anyone calling. Because if you're the one they talk to, that right there would be a violation of your parole. Damn. I know you don't want to be an accessory to something like that. Oh, man. So, you think you might remember who those folks were who <laughs> called you? You might remember now. She just shook him down with a smile on her face. You're the owner here, Mr. Lundegaard? My name's Marge Gunderson. My father-in-law, he's the owner. Well, I'm a police officer. Had any new vehicles stolen off the lot, specifically a tan color Sierra. Oh, is he about to crack? <laughs> oh man, he's shitting his pants. Nope, no ma'am. Okie dokie, thanks a bunch. I'll let you get back to your paperwork then. There's no way, she saw right through him. Yep. Yeah, uh, give me Shep. I, I gotta talk to a, a, a friend of his. Oh geez. It's all falling apart, Cherry. <gasps> Are you meeting with the guy who called? What about Norm? Oh, you look great. Easy there, easy there, easy there. 
What are you doing, Marge? Well, what about you, Mike? Are you married? You mind if I sit over here? Uh, I was married to Linda Cookson. <laughs> what? Don't you sit over there. I prefer that. Sorry. Oh, just so I can see. You don't have to turn my neck. Uh, Linda uh, had leukemia, you know. Oh. She passed away. <gasps> no. Oh, man. She fought real hard, Marge. What, what, what can you say? Even, like, the music stopped and everything. Well, I always liked you I much. always liked you so much. I shouldn't have done this. You were such a super lady. I've been so lonely. Jeez. That was so sad. How long you work for the escort service? <laughs> I don't know, a few months. Find that work interesting, do you? What are you talking about? <laughs> right? <laughs> 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 Shit, what the hell are you doing? I'm banging that girl. Oh! oh. Get the fuck out of here! Get out! Damn, Shep. Fuck you! Shep, what the fuck are you doing? Shipping, motherfucker. I thought his friend would come and kill him. Shoot your fucking wife and I shoot all your little fucking children. Okay, now you stay away from Scotty now. Got it! He was listening. Yeah, he's going. Oh my gosh. Jerry, you are so incompetent. exactly how he ended up in this position. Be back in a minute. Here's your damn money. <laughs> Where's my daughter? Yeah. Oh no. What are you doing? Hopefully he just kills him and doesn't fuck this up and get killed himself. Where's my daughter? Fuck you, man. Where's Jerry? No gene, no money. Is this a fucking joke here? Oh. What were you thinking? What's with you people? Fucking imbeciles! <gasps> oh, oh my god! Fucking shit! Oh no! This is so bad. <sighs> now he just has the money and her still. And a fourth body. Father-in-law tried to be a hero and ended up getting shot in the chest. Oh yeah, just get right out of the way, Jerry. May I have your ticket, please? Open the fucking gate! What is your plan here? Well, that makes sense. Probably insisted on making sure he paid. This literally gets worse by the minute. And again, he doesn't even seem sad. What did you do with him? I think you just put him in the trunk. He's probably still in there. Are you calling Stan? Well, I'm I'm going to bed now. To sleep it off? So we have five dead people, a million dollars gone, and the wife is still kidnapped. Yeah, and the dad's car was just like left. Up there. Shep went crazy. Yeah, I thought Shep was either gonna kill someone or get killed. This little guy's drinking and he says, so where can a guy find some action? He says, the last guy thought he's a jerk is dead now. Well, that don't sound like too good a deal for him then. <laughs> <laughs> he says, yeah, that guy's dead and I don't mean of old age. The homicide's down here and thought I should call it in. Wow. Just him being horny exposed himself. Well, what this guy look like anyways? Oh, he's a... Funny looking? Little guy, kind of funny looking. <laughs> in what way? Oh, just in a general kind of way. <laughs> Perfect description. It's probably nothing, but thanks for calling her in. Sure. What happened to his partner? Jesus Christ. <sighs> really was a million dollars. Look at your blood all over it. Probably dry at this point. Where's the wife though? She's probably with the other guy? Oh, he only took out 80,000. I think you're gonna need a little more than that. Where's he gonna hide the rest? Oh, is he gonna go bury it or something? I don't know if you can bury anything in this. It's just frozen. You gonna remember where you put this? His blood will be the marker. Yeah, how the fuck are you supposed to remember this spot? Oh, I'm sure that will stay there. Linda Coxie. Bothering Linda for about all for a good year. 
really fast trainer. Wouldn't leave her alone. Oh, what? Hmm. He didn't. So he's just a creep? Living with his parents now. Oh, jeez. Linda's fine. You should call her. Jeez. I'm worried for her. Yeah. That's a surprise. He was so believable. Hello? Always oh, hungry. <laughs> Still trying to fake those? Perpetrators were driving a car with dealer plate and they called someone who works here. <laughs> Are the cars counted daily or what kind of a routine here? I'm cooperating here and there, uh, there's no... Uh... You're so sketchy! You have no call to get snippy with me. I'm just doing my job here. <laughs> oh no, you pissed her off. I'm cooperating and there's no... We're doing all we can. Oh man. Could I talk to Mr. Gesterson? Nope, he's dead in his trunk. I'll do a damn luck count. Sir, right now? Yeah, right now. I'm sorry, sir. Ah, oh, what the Christ. I think he's just running. <laughs> he's fleeing the interview. An outside line here. Detective Cyber, please. But something's come up. You got some sort of signal? Well, it's something kind of small, but I'm a up there. problem. <laughs> he's so invested. You should see the other guy. <gasps> Careful to her. Uh, she started shrieking, you know. They killed her? Maybe just knocked her out? There was a lot of blood. Was there blood? I didn't see any blood. How the fuck do you split a fucking car, you dummy? One of us pays the other for half. No fucking way. Fucking notice this. You have... I got fucking shot. $920,000 still. I'm taking that fucking car. That fuck is mine. You know, I've been listening to your fucking bullshit all week. You're about to get shot. What the? Ah! With an axe? Gustafson's accountant. Yeah. But we still haven't found Gustafson? Oh. Wow. And Linda guy too? Yeah. Oh, I'm almost back. I'm taking a drive around Moose Lake. Oh, she's going to the lake? So the whole state has it, huh? Gustafson and Linda I don't want her to go there by herself. Right? There's a car. Who's car? My car! Okay, you're careful, Marge. I'll send a couple cars. Marge, be careful. Marge! Marge. <laughs> Honestly, though, Marge, just get back in the car. Just shoot first, don't you know? This is body out there. There's gotta be blood. He just got hacked up. I'm gonna be very upset if something happens to her. At least she has her gun out already. Oh, is he burying him? Sounds like a chainsaw or something. Wood chipper? Oh. Definitely a wood chipper. Marge, go back to your car. No, just shoot him. You don't need to ask questions with this scene. Oh my can't, can't hear even, you. Can't even hear. Marge! Too far. Come on, Marge, you can get this shot. Oh. Ah. Slow, Marge, go slow. Wow. That money's just gone. Oh, they'll find it in the Sierra. Oh, it's no, buried, it's buried. I forgot. So that was Mrs. Lundegaard on the floor in there. Yeah, she was dead. And I guess that was your accomplice and the wood chipper. It's three people in Brainerd. Then you got the father-in-law and the parking attendant. That was crazy. So many people died? Oh, is this Jerry? Did you just go running? Mr. Anderson, is this your Burgundy 98 out here? Yeah, yeah, just a sec. Where are you going, man? Jeez. They announced it. Three cent stamp. You're Mallard? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> All right. It's terrific. Hoffman's blue winged teal got the 29 cent. Who cares? Whenever they raise the postage, people need the little stamps. Yeah, I guess. Aw, oh, Norm. <laughs> oh. Heck, Norm, you know, we're doing pretty good. I love you, Margie. I love you, Norm. Oh, the relationship makes me so happy. Two more months. Wow. All right. That was Fargo. What'd you think? That was 
excellent. That was incredible. Yeah, maybe like one of my favorite movies that we watched on the channel. That somehow did everything well. It was extremely funny, extremely sad, action-packed, thriller. I mean, it was everything. Literally everything. And every single person in this was incredible. Oh yeah. The cast was totally stacked. The story was incredible. And then you throw on top of it that it's a true story. How is that a true story? Yeah, that you, is... like you can't even write that. That's insane. I am 1 million percent a Marge Stan. <laughs> that was, I mean, she is seven months pregnant. She's the badass chief of police. I don't know who you are, Marge, because you're that's not your real name, but... Oh, right. Names were changed. Incredible. I mean, they established her immediately. Mm -hmm. She shows up to the crime scene, calm, cool, collected, and just nailed it. Every aspect was 100% correct. The size of the people, the footprints, exactly how it went down. I mean, every step of the way, she just seemed on it. Yeah, and I mean, I wouldn't even say that she was one step behind them because she wasn't even that far. No, she I mean- She was right behind them. Yeah, at no point was she really flustered or anything. No, and she figured everything out just instantly. Even the one thing that she didn't get right away, which was at the dealership, it bugged her enough that she immediately came back there. Yeah, and then, you know, she was giving Jerry the benefit of the doubt by letting him go, but she didn't really need much else as soon as he left. No, I mean, she was the star of the movie for sure. A hundred percent. And her relationship with Norm, gotta be one of the sweetest things I've ever seen. So sweet. It, all, it made me like teary-eyed at the end because I was just like, it was so, I'm so happy for you. Yeah, it was just so pure, yeah. so perfect. I yeah. mean, from Norm making her breakfast in the morning to then bringing her lunch and then how supportive she was and other people were of his paintings yes. and stuff. Like, I don't know how you have such a pure relationship in the middle of what was Quite a few murders. The Minnesota accent too, on top of everything, just like made it that much like sweeter. Oh yeah. I don't know much about these towns like in real life, but I was getting such like a small town vibe and everyone just knew everyone and everybody was very sweet and polite. I loved it. Yeah, it was amazing how wholesome everything was. Again, surrounded by just heinous murders. Obviously Carl and his creepy ass friend yeah. were out of towners and they stood out like a sore thumb. Oh yeah. Jerry, man, I, I was... can't even believe how bad that you could fuck up your life and then to just add to it, thinking that getting your wife kidnapped for ransom. That's your solution. Yeah, like every single thing that he did was screwed up, nothing was working. No. Every single scheme that he was trying to do in order to just pay off more debt was just accruing him more debt every single time. It was like astonishing that someone could be such a screw up. Yeah, I totally agree. He was the worst. I don't know how many characters have frustrated me as much as Jerry. Yeah. I don't know, that father-in-law should have objected to that marriage or something. He was so pathetic the entire time. And even at the end, when he's just like screaming there on the bed as he's getting arrested. Yeah. There was something about that that just felt gross. Yeah. Especially knowing that this is a true story, like that dude deserved the worst because he destroyed his family because he was just fucking loser. Such a loser. And Jean, she just seemed like the nicest lady. I mean, everyone from that town just seemed so sweet, but like, she just minding her own business, like knitting and taking care of their son, just. No, the fact that yeah. she was caught up in this and then died, especially what was the reason to kill her? The because guy- that creepy guy was just annoyed with her. Yeah. He had such a short fuse and obviously the whole hitman scenario, kidnapping scenario is crazy criminal activity to begin with. But if you're gonna get yourself in that type of situation, <laughs> You would think that a good kidnapper would not be someone that has a short fuse. Right, someone I mean, for holding someone for ransom, yeah, especially. He wasn't hired as a hitman. Like he was hired to kidnap someone 
to get paid for and then return her. Really, that guy was responsible for 90% of the deaths. Yeah, most of them. I mean, Carl did kill the parking attendant and the father-in-law. The father-in-law. Um, the Maybe other guy. Half. Yeah. Half. <laughs> I mean, the incompetence just traveled. It went from Jerry to these two guys. Mm -hmm. They fucked up the kidnapping to begin with. For a moment, I thought Jean died falling down the stairs. Mm -hmm. I thought it looked like she was okay, but then she wasn't moving. So then I was like, oh God, she is dead. It didn't even seem like they had a working relationship, the two of them. No, it was like they barely even knew each other. I'm also thinking like, have they done this before? Because obviously Shep knew Carl, but it's like, did he know him from like prison? I don't know. They did say he was on probation, so they maybe just met in prison or something. Right. So I'm like, does he even have any experience? Kidnapping people or is he just a criminal to begin with? Yeah. And just like, oh, I need the extra cash. Sure. I'll take this lady. Yeah. They had no intelligence between the three of them. No. And it resulted in quite a few deaths. Yeah. So we had the first highway patrol. I think yeah. that's what they said he was. And then you have the two, that couple the witnesses, that drove by yeah. and witnessed it. Then you had the father-in-law. Yeah, the father-in-law, the parking attendant. Parking attendant. And then the wife. And then the wife, and then Carl ends up getting it. Yes. So technically seven people died, I think. Yeah. And then the other guy's clearly going to prison. Forever. Hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> I know, now I like, I need to look this up. Like, right, what are the actual like details? I mean, they said they did it exactly how it happened. Yeah, so it's gotta be easy to look it up. But on this channel, we have been very vocal about crime movies and I am like a super crime junkie. Yeah. Um, I like podcasts, I like, <laughs> I like Murder documentaries, mystery. <laughs> shows, movies, all of it. So this was very, very interesting to watch. Obviously it makes me sad that this is like a true story but honestly what is that saying that like oh, life uh, is truth is truth uh, is stranger than fiction yeah i think that's what it is yeah absolutely i mean this was insane it wasn't uh, necessarily like a tricky or difficult movie to follow it was mm -hmm. very clear everything that was happening every step of the way mm -hmm. it was just almost unbelievable yeah how stuff could just go this bad it just literally kept getting worse like jerry just kept adding everything to more and more what was just gonna be piled onto his debt he just kept trying to find like a quick solution and a quick way to make cash and, and just, he was using the cars at the job yeah whatever that was loans. yeah fake loans and then the whole parking lot scheme or the land scheme for yeah which like was that even real or was he just trying to get the money which it seemed more like the latter yeah the kidnapping thing was it the whole reason he was trying to get money was that to pay off the debt from the car loans or was there something else that he was fucking up and everything else was just trying to get money to pay that off. Like, I don't know, Jerry was just the worst. And now that I'm thinking about it, I used to watch a lot of Rick and Morty and the dad in that is Jerry and he is such a fuck up and everything. I really wonder if the creators took inspiration from Jerry from this and we're just like, oh my God, this guy is the worst. Let's make a cartoon dad just fuck everything up like this guy. And name him Jerry. And name him Jerry. <laughs> I don't know. That was wild, but I loved this movie. It was so good. Like you said, it somehow did everything perfectly. I laughed. I almost cried at times. I was surprised. The violence was definitely more aggressive than I thought for whatever reason. I mean, it started with the cop getting a bullet in his head and it just kind of flowed out onto him. Yeah, no, that was gross. Um, so man, this movie had everything and it was short too it was an hour and a half which is crazy it feels like we've been sitting here for a while not in a bad way but just like you're taking in so much and everything was so intentional there was never a moment that it was like okay how much of this movie's left right every single scene has something important that just kept the movie going full steam ahead. Mm -hmm. Another crazy thing for me is how they were kind of revealed of their location to begin with. We saw them multiple times hire prostitutes, escorts and stuff. Mm -hmm. And just the fact that he went to a bar and tried to get information of, for hookers and then blatantly just said, I, the last person who talked to me like that, I killed them. Like. The fact that he was just so horny going around this small town trying to get a woman when they're holding a body hostage. I mean, these people were just dumber than dumb. That's why I feel like this is not, they were not experts. No, they were just, <laughs> they were just criminals. 
And they're like, yeah, I know a shady guy. And what they were trying to do, they could not do. And it got everyone killed. Yeah, and honestly, like when you think about it, if they did hire a professional, I feel like it really shouldn't have been that difficult. And nobody should have had to get hurt. This should have been a pretty smooth kidnapping and- just, Transaction. This could have been done better. The amount of things that went wrong is still just like astonishing to me. Like how can one person just be such a screw up? I wonder if they ever found that money. I mean, the snow would melt at some yeah, point. That's what I was thinking. As soon as the snow melted, I'm sure they were gonna find it. If they put that in the movie, I'm assuming that that happened in real life, mm -hmm. that he buried it somewhere. So maybe they found it at some point and they're like, oh yeah, yeah, there's the money. They had to have known about it because Jerry was still alive at the end and then the father-in-law's business partner would yeah. have known about the money as well. Yeah, so there are people who would know, like, oh no, we did a million dollars in cash. Mm -hmm. Jerry was probably still in custody being like, oh, I don't know, like uh, 40,000? Don't you know? Don't you know? Really loved everything about this movie. The cinematography of it, the shot selection, and how they were able to do some of these emotions. I mean, especially the acting was a highlight for me. Mm -hmm. Frances McDormand, I think she's won tons of awards, well-deserved. That was a spectacular performance, especially how she could be so happy and smile and so confident and smart on things. But then even in moments when like Jerry kind of snapped at her or mm -hmm. something and her whole demeanor just changed. Mm -hmm. Like she was pissed, but she was still very polite. <laughs> yeah. And she was always hungry, which that's okay. She yeah. was pregnant. That was cute. Yeah. <laughs> I do want to know what happened to Mike and like why that was placed in the film. That was the only odd thing in the movie. Yeah, I'm like wondering what the significance is because obviously it's a true story. This was all part of it, but why did that need to be in the story? It didn't add anything, in my opinion, to the movie. Unless we missed some kind of connection, but obviously her friend said like, oh no, you know, he's having a hard time. He's staying at home. Basically that he was struggling. So yeah, I don't think it connected. So I don't know if that was just to show us her as a person, mm -hmm. someone who would be willing to talk to someone. Mm -hmm. Like just, she's so nice. She wouldn't even think anything other than, oh, okay, this person wants to meet. I'm gonna go meet. Mm -hmm. And then it ended up being terrible or even how he uh, sat on the same side of the chair and she was immediately like, no, go back. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's the only thing I can think of is just to show more character side for Marge. But if I had to pick something that didn't feel fully right, that would be that scene. Yeah, it just seemed like an out of place moment, but you could definitely be right. It could have just been for us to see Marge a little bit better because of the phone call. And then when she met him, it's like, Norm, but- Right, yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, she was the picture perfect <laughs> yeah. wife, mom to be, and chief. So I wanna read more about Marge. I'm gonna find out who Marge is in real life. Yeah, I um, hope it's a real, like, Marge, obviously with a different name. Yeah, I mean, they said it was a true story. I don't think it's based on a true story. I yeah, don't think anything was... Fabricated other than no. the names. Yeah, so very curious, but curious to see if Marge is still, like, working, like, still being an awesome chief. Yeah. But kind of doubt that this town maybe experiences, like, a ton of murders, but maybe they do. I don't know. <sighs> I don't know. That had to be an absolutely insane story for everyone in that area. Yeah. Uh, it's just incredible how just one dude's failure for money, however he lost the money or something, just kept escalating to the point where seven people ended up dead in a matter of days, just terrorized through this this community. Yeah. So crazy movie, great at everything. The acting is what stood out for me from Marge. William H. Macy was perfection for someone that I just hated so much. Mm -hmm. And Steve Buscemi, we haven't seen too much of him on the channel, I think. The last thing might have been The Big Lebowski. Mm -hmm. and Loved he, him in The Big Lebowski. Yeah, he was great. He barely got a chance to speak at all. And then in here, he was the one that was speaking so much and the other guy was the one who wouldn't say a freaking word. Mm -hmm. So uh, everyone was just excellent. I had such a great time with this. Yeah, no, me too. I'm very, very happy that we watched this. And we talked about a very successful TV show called Fargo as well. So if it's 60% as good as this movie, it's gotta be an amazing TV show. Yeah, and is it Marge? Oh, I don't know. Follow the adventures of Marge or something? Because I wanna, I, <laughs> yeah, I wanna you, watch you it. You'd be all in if it was. <laughs>
<laughs> but let us know if it's something that we should check out. I'm so happy we watched this. I thought it was just such a great film. Yeah, absolutely. So if you'd like to see the full length reaction to this, as well as everything else that we've reacted to, the link to our Patreon is in the description. If you'd like to interact with us on any other types of social media, all those links are in the description as well. And with that, peace everyone. Bye. Bye.